Hello everyone. Today our topic is estimation of parameters. So far we have introduced the concept of estimation of parameters. Now the natural question is how to find a good estimate of a particular population parameter. Although there is no general answer to this question, but the method of maximum likelihood might serve the purpose in most cases. And there are also interval estimation, we will talk about point estimations. So let us talk today about the method of maximum likelihood. In this method, we construct a function called the likelihood function with the help of a sample of given size drawn from the given population. Then the values of the unknown parameters are found in such a way that the likelihood function becomes a maximum. The importance of this lies in the fact that in most cases it yields very good estimates. So, let me talk about likelihood function for a discrete population first. Let me give you the concept. Let x be a discrete random variable. Okay. Let x be a discrete random variable and x1, x2, xn be a sample of size n drawn from the population of x. Let theta1, theta2, theta k be the unknown population parameters. For convenience, let us write probability of x equal to xi equal to f of xi, f of theta1, theta2, theta k, where theta1, theta2, theta k being the unknown population parameters. The likelihood function of the sample is denoted by L of, it is denoted by L of x1, x2, xn and also it is a function of x1, x2, xn, the sample values and theta 1, theta 2, theta k, that is the unknown population parameter. And this is your probability mass function, probability x equal to xi is given by fxi of function of unknown parameters are involved. And it is defined by, the likelihood function is defined by L of x1, x2, xn, theta 1, theta 2, theta k equal to probability of x equal to x1, comma probability of x2 equal to x2 etc probability of xn equal to xn so this is the definition of likelihood function in case of discrete population if you are talking about a discrete population then this is the likelihood function and that is equal to now since x1 x2 xn are mutually independent random variables each having the distribution of the parent random variable x, we have this likelihood function equal to uh, probability of x equal to x1 equal to x1, x2 equal to x2 product because all are mutually independent random variables and that is equal to f of theta1, theta2, theta k, f, f of f at x2, theta1, theta2, theta k, etc. So, this is also the product because x1, x2, xn are mutually independent random variables, each having the distribution of the parent random variable x. Now, likelihood function for a continuous population. Let me give you the idea of the continuous population. So, let x be a continuous random variable in this case. You have to consider an x1, x2, xn be a sample of size n drawn from the population of x. And theta1, theta2, theta k are the unknown population parameters as usual. Let f of x and theta1, theta2, theta k be the function of unknown population parameters with the probability density function. f is the probability density function. And in the discrete case, it was probability uh, mass function. The likelihood function of the sample is given by, is denoted by with the same notation because likelihood function is a sample, is a function of x1, x2, xn sample values as well as of the unknown parameters theta1, theta2, theta k. And is given by 
L of x1, x2, xn, theta1, theta2, theta k, dx1, dx2, d, dxn, because it's a continuous case. So you have to use the probability density function and probability differentials are given by probability of x1 that is equal to probability of x1 less than equal to x1 less than equal to x1 plus dx1 just like we define the probability differentials x2 less than x2 less than equal to x2 plus dx2 etc. Now since again x1 x2 xn are mutually independent under variables each having the distribution of the parent random variable x and you are dealing with a continuous random variable. So this equal to this probabilities will be product probability of x1 less than less than x1 less than equal to x1 plus dk x1 probability differential times probability differential times probability differential all because all are product because these are all mutually independent under variables and naturally you have x1 theta 1 theta 2 theta k function of function of x2 theta 1 theta 2 theta k etc okay so uh, so you see using this and the last line you can write the likelihood function in case of continuous distribution l of x1 x2 xn theta 1 theta 2 theta k and function of x1 and theta 1 theta 2 theta k etc xn theta 1 theta 2 theta k so these are the two definition in case of continuous and in case of discrete look at the discrete case yeah this is your discrete case this is your discrete case and this is for continuous case this is the likelihood function now what is the method what is the method of maximum likelihood let me tell you the method regarding x1 x2 xn as fixed we find find the values if exist of the parameters theta 1 theta 2 theta k so actually we have to estimate the values of the unknown parameters all are functions of x1 x2 xn in such a way that the likelihood function is maximum okay that the likelihood function should be maximum let theta 1 cap theta 2 cap and theta k cap be those values of the parameters theta 1 theta 2 theta k respectively leading the likelihood function to a maximum so these are the maximum these are the values of the parameters theta 1 cap theta 2 cap and theta k cap are the values of the parameters for which the likelihood function is maximum then the statistics theta 1 cap theta 2 cap etc are called the maximum likelihood estimates these are called maximum likelihood estimates of the corresponding parameters if they give you the maximum value of the likelihood function that means we say that it is most probable that theta 1 theta 2 theta k has the values theta 1 cap theta 2 cap etc since for those values this probability probability of x equal to x1 equal to x1 or probability differential if you are talking about discrete then the probability uh, of x1 equal to x1 x2 equal to x2 and if you are talking about the continuous then it's a probability differential it is maximum that is it is most likely that the sample x1 x2 xn is drawn from a population having probability mass fxi which is a function of the uh, likelihood estimates theta 1 cap theta 2 cap theta k cap at xi for i equal to 1 to n or that the sample x1 x2 xn is drawn from a population having probability density function f of x comma semicolon theta 1 cap theta 2 cap etc so your sample is drawn from the probability mass or from the probability density function now since l is positive maximizing l amounts to maximizing log l if l is maximum its logarithm will be maximum because this is a product you have a product term so i have to take log on both sides so 
Therefore, we have to solve the following equations. L is a function of the sample values as well as the unknown parameters theta 1, theta 2, theta k. So, you have to solve these following equations del log the first order partial derivatives del del theta 1 of ln L equal to 0, del del theta 2 of ln L equal to 0, etc. These are called likelihood equations. Okay. These are called likelihood equations. By solving these equations, we may obtain the maximum likelihood estimates of estimates that is theta 1 cap, theta 2 cap, etc. of the unknown population parameters theta 1, theta 2, theta k respectively provided that they exist and make the likelihood function a maximum. So, that was the main method of maximum likelihood estimates. You have to write the maximum likelihood equations likelihood equations, the first order differentials or first order partial derivatives with respect to the unknown parameters and solving, you will get the maximum likelihood estimates. That will give you the main concept and the estimation. Let us have few examples on that. So, let us have first application to binomial NP population. So, find the MLE that is the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter P of binomial NP population. You know for a binomial distribution, you have only two parameters N and P. P is the probability of success and N is the number of trial. So, let X be a binomial NP variate that is X follows binomial NP distribution. Let X1, X2, Xn be a sample of size N drawn from the population of X. Then you have this is the probability mass function fxi p equal to given by n c x i p p to the power x i 1 minus p whole to the power n minus x i i equal to 1 to n. This is the probability mass function, right? Then the likelihood function l is given by l equal to n x 1 p to the power x 1 1 minus p n minus uh, 1 minus p whole to the power n minus x 1 times n c x 2 p to the power x 2 1 minus p whole to the power n minus x 2 etc. Okay, so likelihood function is given by this. So that is equal to ncx1, ncx2, etc., ncxn, and p to the power x1 plus x2, etc., xn. Times, if you take the powers of p, then it will be p to the power x1 plus x2, xn, and if you take the powers of 1 minus p, then it will be nn, small n, capital N, times minus x1 plus x2, etc., xn. So, this is a simplified form of the likelihood function. I hope it is clear after the theoretical development. Okay. So, that was the likelihood function. I gave you the likelihood function concept. Yeah, this is the likelihood function for a continuous distribution. And this is the likelihood function for a discrete distribution. You look at that for a discrete distribution. This is the likelihood function. And this is the result of the likelihood function for a discrete and this is the likelihood function for a continuous case, right? It's all product because all are mutually independent random variables. So, you have for a binomial distribution, this. Now, for maximum of this, we have to take the derivatives. So, you can take log on both sides because it's a product. So, it will give you the addition terms. So, log of this constant and x1 plus x2, the power comes, right? LNP. And this is after taking log, log on. It's a very simple calculation. Regarding the sample values x1, x2, xn as fixed, sample values are fixed. That is considering L as a function of P only because you have the sample values are fixed. So, P is the only variable, function of P. Now, we shall find the value of P for which ln L or L is maximum. So, for L and L to be locally maximum, we must have d log L dp equal to 0 because you have only one parameter, only one function of P. So, you have, I am taking the total derivative, d log L dp equal to 0 and that will give you this term, first term will be 0 and this will be x1, x2, xn, x1 plus x2, etc, xn by P 
and this will give you one minus of one minus p right this whole divided by minus of one minus p right let's check yeah this is after taking differentials so you can simplify further and you will get you can write p as in this term and this is your x bar x1 plus x2 etc xn by n is nothing but your sample mean that is x bar by n so this will give you the simplified form of p this is very simple you take the differential first you take log after that derivative and simple calculation find out the unknown parameter in terms of the known things you can check further that the second order derivative with respect to p should be less than zero for all values of p you can check the derivative hence ln l has a unique local maximum at p equal to x bar by n and consequently l has a unique local maximum at p equal to x bar by n thus the maximum likelihood estimate of p estimate p cap p hat of the parameter p is given by p hat equal to x bar by n this is the maximum likelihood estimate of p hat this is very simple and this is very important in exams it can be this those type of questions will be there find out the maximum likelihood estimate of p of the binomial np distribution so this is the answer this is how and you have to write like this so all the things are there now there is one note the mean of the population is np you know that binomial np distribution mean of the population is np already we have proved in the binomial distribution chapter we know the sample mean x bar is a consistent and unbiased estimate of the population mean that already we proved in the sampling distribution chapter hence np cap is a consistent and unbiased estimate of np and you know about what is a consistent estimate and what is the unbiased estimate already you have learned about that and i gave you the lecture on that consequently p hat is a consistent and unbiased estimate of p so you cancel n from both sides that will give you the result consistent and unbiased estimate of p so that was the theoretical uh, uh, answers of and uh, solution of the question what is the apply uh, what is the maximum likely estimate of the parameter p that is given by x bar by n now next i will find out the application to poisson mu population so find the maximum likely estimate of the parameter mu of poisson mu passive population so poisson mu distribution is also a discrete distribution so you have to apply the discrete maximum likelihood estimates so let x be a poisson mu variate so x follows a poisson distribution with mu distri uh, mu parameter mu only one parameter you have and let x1 x2 xn be a sample of size n drawn from the population of x then we have fxi mu equal to e to the power minus mu mu to the power xi by factorial xi that is the uh, pmf of the probability um, uh, pmf of the discrete distrib uh, poisson distribution right this is the pmf so the likelihood function l is given by again you have to take the product of all so you have to write x1 x2 xn write this right so you have e to the power minus mu mu to the power x1 by factorial x1 e to the power minus mu mu to the power x2 by factorial x2 etc mu to the power minus e to the power minus mu mu to the power xn by factorial xn and that is equal to e to the power minus n mu because you you can add the powers of exponential function and also mu to the power x1 plus x2 plus xn so if you have x1 plus x2 plus xn so that can be written as you know that that can be written as etc by n equal to x bar so that can be written as n x bar so mu to the power n x bar by factorial x1 x2 xn so this is the simplified form of l now you have to take log on both sides ln base e so if you take log it will be minus n mu in a n x bar ln mu and log of x1 factorial this part and x1 x2 xn are fixed this uh, this is the sample values are fixed so you have only functions of log l is a function of mu only function of mu this should be mu sorry this is a typographical error so this is also mu so with respect to mu you have to differentiate right so del d log l by d mu equal to zero and that will give you mu equal to x bar 
So this is the estimate, maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter mu. So mu cap is given and you can check further that the second order derivative with respect to mu should be less than zero. So ln L is a unique local maximum at mu equal to x bar. Hence, consequently, L has a unique local maximum at mu equal to x bar. Therefore, maximum likelihood estimate of mu cap hat actually of the parameter, sorry, it should be mu, is given by mu hat equal to x bar. Is given by mu hat equal to x. So this is the maximum likelihood estimate of mu, the Poisson mu distribution. And since the sample mean is a consistent and unbiased estimate of the population means that we have learned from the sampling distribution, hence mu hat is a consistent and unbiased estimate of mu, right? So this is the theoretical note in this case. Next, let's have a continuous distribution application to normal M sigma population. I will discuss about the next. Uh, about the population, normal population, application to normal population. So in this case, find the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameter m and sigma because m and sigma are the only parameters of the population, normal distribution. So let x1, 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 x2, etc. be a sample of size n drawn from the normal n sigma population. Then PDF, the probability density function is given by, you know that there is no i because uh, probability mass function is used for the discrete and PDA probability density function is used for the continuous. So this is a continuous distribution and its probability density function is given by 1, 1 by root over 2 pi sigma e to the power minus x minus m by 2 whole square by 2 sigma square. Okay, and this is the range of x. The likelihood function L is given by, you know that the likelihood function can be taken as the product of the functions, uh, PDFs. So L equal to uh, first, you have to write, replace x by x1, then x2, etc. And if you want to simplify this, then 2 pi to the power minus n by 2, because you take 1 by root over 2 pi, how many times? n times. So you can write 2 pi whole to the power minus n by 2 and sigma to the power minus n, because n times you have. And e to the power minus 1 by 2 sigma square equal to uh, summation i equal to 1 to n xi minus m whole square okay so this is the simplified form of the likelihood function l this is the simplified form of the likelihood function l now you have to take log okay ln base e and if you take log this is the form of the logarithm log l min equal to minus n by 2 log 2 pi minus n log sigma minus 1 by 2 sigma square summation i equal to 1 to n xi minus m whole square right now regarding this sample values are fixed as usual so that is uh, considering l as a function of m and sigma l as a function of mean and standard deviation so you have to take partial differentiation in this case so for local maximum you have to take the necessary condition that is first order partial derivative with respect to m equal to 0 and first order partial derivative with respect to sigma equal to 0. And that will give you summation. The first equation from the first that is del del m of ln l equal to 0 will give you summation i equal to 10 xi minus m equal to 0 that is m equal to x bar. And second equation that is del del sigma of ln l equal to 0 gives you with respect to sigma. So naturally, m is a constant, all other things are zero. So you have sigma square from the second equation, you can simplify that. Sigma square equal to one by n summation i equal to one to n xi minus x bar square, and that is equal to a square, capital A square. And that is the sample variance actually. This is actually sample variance. So naturally, sigma equal to, you can write sigma equal to s, right? So this is the estimation of m, and this is the estimation of sigma. So the maximum likelihood estimate of m hat, maximum likelihood estimate m hat of the parameter m is given by m hat equal to x bar and sigma hat square equal to s square. That is sigma hat you can write, sigma hat equal to s. So this is the maximum likelihood estimate of the two unknown parameters for the normal m sigma population.
okay so that is all about your maximum likelihood estimates so in this video you have learned about what is maximum likelihood estimates how will you estimate the parameters and what method of maximum likelihood estimates and there are three examples given to you one for binomial np distribution that is a discrete distribution second one for a poisson mu distribution that is also a discrete distribution and third one is a continuous distribution that is a normal n sigma distribution so you follow my lecture i will post the next lecture very soon that is will be on interval estimation thank you all